Welcome to Word Nugget. Please kindly subscribe to our channel, like and share this message to bless others. Thank you. Beloved, beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God which worketh in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Before you were regenerated, you had a heart of stone. But when you got born again, God gave you a heart of flesh. And God wrote his laws in your heart. His law is his will. We call it the law of life in your heart. So your heart now can be trusted. You can now listen to your heart. The problem is that your soul has its reason. So it's this... It sometimes try to um, entangle itself with, 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 with what God is saying. That is why when the word of God comes in, you can know in clarity what God has been saying to your heart. Praise God. So God determined that we will know his will in our heart. Because he's within us. Hallelujah. He's within us. Now this verse says that... now. It is God that worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. The word will here actually is the word for desire. God gives you the desire. The desire to do his good pleasure. But the Greek says, in the Greek, God, it, for it is God that worketh in you. The word worketh is actually present active participle. The Greek says that it is God who is constantly working in you, giving you the desire. Giving you the desire. To desire and to perform his good will or his good pleasure. What am I saying? Now, I never lead you to do anything without he having first given you the, given you the desire. Let me give an example. If someone comes to prophesy to you that um, in the next three months you have to travel abroad. Yeah. You have to go to um, Japan. Japan. Yeah. God wants you to get to Japan. You have to go and study a course in Japan. All right. The prophecy has come. But you yourself... You don't have a single desire. <laughs> to leave the country. Now, so what the prophet is saying, is it the will of God? Now, the Bible is telling us here that the, the Holy Ghost is in us. How can you discern the will of God? Through desire. Desire. First of all, whatever God will want you to do, God will first spark the desire in you. And the desire is not just a single desire. It is constant. He constantly works the desire in you. Both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Okay. So now, the prophet says, I should go to Japan. But God has not previously sparked any, any desire in me. Two things are likely to... Uh, there are two implications. I either, number one, the prophet missed the prophecy. Or number two, it is correct. But the timing is wrong. All you know, the Japan is in the next three years. Because actually, when someone prophesies, the spirit realm is the, is the eternal realm. So a prophet can say, look, this year, this year, the marriage is coming on. This year, this year. <laughs> but meanwhile, meanwhile, it's in the next five years. But in the realm of the spirit, he saw that it is just happening. That is the spiritual realm. It's the eternal realm. So he picked it and prophesied it in the present. There are things you see in the spirit. As it's, just, it's just happening. But actually, it's 17 years in the realm of time. So he can say, oh, it's happening. If, he, he, if he's not given interpretation, it's happening. You may miss it. 
But when it is time, now he tells you that you are going to Japan. When it is getting to time, all you, you know what God will do? If it is the next three years, maybe after two years, God will awaken the desire for Japan in you. Before you realize, you may read an article about Japan. Or someone will tell you something about Japan and ignite a certain desire for Japan. God has started working a desire in you. Then you just apply to Jap- uh, apply, you know, and choose a university, and everything comes to pass. Desires are supernatural. God uses desire, our desires. The scripture says so. He works in us. Actually, he's constantly working. That is why you shouldn't marry anyone you have no desire for. No, you shouldn't let anyone prophesy you to marry someone. One day I was in a meeting, a, a lady came to me. Um, Vera is your wife. Vera. Vera. And I was moving and the lady was just following me, prophesying. Your wife is Vera. Your wi- I don't even know any Vera. Your wife is Vera. Your wife is Vera. <laughs> I went to another meeting and, and another person was prophesying a name to me. That's your wife. That's your wife. And different kinds of prophecies. I said, is God approving polygamy or something? (laughs) So God uses desire. God bless you for watching. And if you have been blessed by this message, please don't forget to hit the like button and also to subscribe to our channel to receive more edifying content. Thank you and God richly bless you.